Welcome to Delightfully Dysfunctional, a podcast about navigating the emotions of the human condition and the challenges that come with it. I'm Kehlani Persian Mason, a psychotherapist and life coach with James Timmons and Ever Curious Human. This is not a replacement for mental health therapy. Please seek out mental health care if that's what you're needing. This is an opportunity for self healers to dive deep and understand more about themselves. Welcome back, Delightful Humans. We are going to be talking today about love maps. I am Kaylani, and this is James. I'm James. And uh, love maps are about the, it's a, it's a Gottman phrase, a John Gottman term, but it really just means like knowing your partner's inner world. And what I've believed, what I've come to realize is that foundation of like, just having positive interactions, quality time with someone, that softens so many things. Like, in an organization there has to be like you know positive culture in the workplace in order for people to work well together and problem solve or in a with a even a parent-child relationship if you have quality time with them the quality of your relationship with your child improves too so since we are a new little podcast team i am going to spring something on not only you but also our behind the scenes crew kyle and zach hello kyle and zach hello Hello. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to strengthen our love maps, and that just means I got learning more about each other. And fun. Yeah, okay. I know. Look at this. I start bonding. Some team bonding for everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to know, let's see, my first question is going to be your two favorite hobbies. Everyone needs to think about their two favorite hobbies, because I don't actually know this except for my husband, Zach, but... Okay. For you and Kyle, I'm not sure. Hmm. My two favorite hobbies? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, video editing and music. Yeah. That, that's probably it for so, me. So, and when I think of ho- like they, those are the things that like light you up. You feel like mm-hmm. the most yourself, or it gives you even a sense of like excitement or relief sometimes. I think hobbies can be like. Relief. I mean, How do you feel? Maybe not music. Okay. Video creation, number one. And then, um, I mean, is hanging out with friends, is that yeah, one? Yeah, okay. community. Just okay, like yeah, community yeah. with others. Yeah, community. for sure. Okay. okay. Um, Kyle or Zach, who's ready to answer? I want to learn more about what the hobbies are, but back behind the scenes. Okay. Um, I'll go first. This is Kyle, by the way. Um. I guess my two favorite hobbies, also video editing. Um, I mean, oh. I do that as a career. A couple so. of nerds. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like to do that in my spare time, too. Um, if it's okay, I'll, I'll, I can plug myself. Check me out. I'm I'm a Uncle Explosion on YouTube. I make funny edits of random things. And oh. uh, I love doing that. Us. We're learning new things <laughs> about Kyle. Yeah, <gasps> um, yeah there's that. Um, I guess maybe also... Kind of like James uh, hanging out with friends. I like to, I play video games with my friends a lot. We we get on uh, Discord calls a lot, just like talk and, and that kind of stuff. And video games, I do that video in a editing. lot of my spare time. Do you Kyle, have a we just become best friends? <gasps> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's, ha- it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, what are your two favorite hobbies? I, well, I should just stop and it could be like, um, what is like the newlyweds game or whatever, even though we're, I don't yeah, know if we're classified we as newlyweds. You. I should write it. To, I'm going to write down my answers and hand okay. them to you. Yeah. Really well, quick. she's writing that down. I want to tell everybody listening. This is Zach. I want to tell everybody to go follow Uncle Explosion on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Mm-hmm. No, no, give it the plug, man. Give it oh, the plug. Come, follow me too. Yeah. Everyone follow me at Kalani underscore evolve for mental health tips. Everyone plug yourself. But after <laughs> you follow Delightful Pod. First follow Delightful Pod. Now we're done. We're delightful done. Pot? Pod. Pod. No, Thank like, you. Oh, that's delightful for Pod. Help making us enunciate. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that's a new uh, a new concept for the podcast, getting into Delightful Pod. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. I I've I haven't numbered in order. Okay. Even. Okay. Okay. Zach. Am I gonna be the judge? You're the. You can reveal if okay. if we know each other if we're full of shit. <laughs> okay, Zach. Tell us your three. Oh, three. I know. Well, I it's two is what I asked. I threw a three in there as I was. Oh, ranking. okay. Okay. Give so, us your two yeah. hobbies. 
Uh, well, one is definitely music by, okay. by a lot. I do really love music. And I was very tempted to make one of my hobbies, making sweet love to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> He's like, I was going to say I that, like, but I won't. You know what, I'm a happily married woman. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would, I would have to say the other one is like, I am such a fanatic for, for learning. I love learning. I love researching things and... And yeah, that's my, like, it's a weird hobby to have, but I'm really into it. James, what did my list say? Kaylani wrote, number one, making sweet love to me. <laughs> no! <laughs> and then she said, number two, making sweet love to me. So, um, I guess that's her favorite of your hobbies? Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, it's... <laughs> Hey, you asked oh for this, honey. Oh my gosh, no, the glow, the, the red is kicking in. Keep, okay, talk about the, the I mean, what's on the paper. That's what it actually says, but I, I, I'm just kidding. It says music, travel, and learning, but she wrote numbers. Number one says travel, right? Yeah, travel I is know, a big I know, that's because we've okay, been she missing. She wrote a list, but she put numbers out of order. So I did. it says music, well, travel, learning. I was brain dumping, and then I organized she, my I thoughts. I mean, she nailed it, though. Yeah. She nailed it. We've been itching to travel. This is this is really hard for me to say, because I have travel internationally. I love traveling. I've backpacked. Like I've, I've driven across the country. I love a road trip. It has been two years. It has been two years since I've been on a plane, and this is a call for help. <laughs> this is a call for help. I'm getting stir crazy and my child has kept me hostage and I need to get out of town. <laughs> I mean, see so, if your daughter will go on a plane with you guys. I, we're after, we, have, we have plans to go somewhere at the end of the month, but I think that par possibly because we've been talking about travel, I've ranked it as number one. Well, but I'm on. glad I still... Is that your... What are your top two? Yeah, I know. Two? Yeah, so my top two. Thank you. Um, my top two are... Being out, like I wish we had better hiking where we live, but I like being outside and just being in nature. And um, I, right now, I mean, I, this question could be different depending on the phase I'm in in my life. I'm just really excited about learning things too. And so our house is a lot of like really nerdy conversation currently okay. about us just being like, listen to what I learned. It's so <laughs> cool. Oh my God. But that's, that's what I love about you, honey. You're the smartest person I know. <laughs> That does sound boring. <laughs> uh, all right, awesome. Okay, so what did you learn? What did you uh, determine about us? What did I determine? Well, I mean, what I love is that you and Kyle instantly learned something about one another. Yeah. I got to learn more about like. For Kyle, this isn't just about editing, but it's a true passion, and mm -hmm. he has a side project there too. Um, for you as well, like getting to know more about like it totally makes sense. It's why I think you're such a good fit for this role, like being curious about other people, community with other people. Oh, yeah. Like I thought that was a really unique thing that you were thoughtful about. Like that's one of my hobbies actually. And um, for my husband, I mean, it, it was, it was fun. It was fun because I, I do know him. I think we know each other really well, but for us as a little team, it, it's delightful to get to continue getting to know all of you. And even even though I know our audience can't see Zach and Kyle, they are very integral parts of our team and we mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thank them. you for asking, by the way. That was that was really nice. Yeah. They, they didn't mention it to me before we just started recording, so <laughs> I'm I'm pretty flattered that I you didn't would know ask. either. I that sprung it nice. on everyone. I was like, <laughs> Surprise! You're gonna talk and we're gonna learn about you. It's gonna be uncomfortable. It's, it's fun. okay. It's yeah. fun. Much better than the narcissist. So you can already see, though, even in this like little mini petri dish of an example, like we shared that, and there's already a different kind of camaraderie in the conversation between all of us, and mm -hmm. just that little brief interaction, and that's the same kind of softening that can happen in a relationship, in a romantic relationship. Yeah, love maps, and you had kind of described this example in terms of like a therapist seeing more of like the GPS of someone's mind, but if we picture like really knowing your partner's inner world mm. it's getting a better idea of the maps and the side streets and like yeah. the alley corners and like what makes them tick what are they excited about who yeah. are their best friends well it's like when that's why like dating some like a going on a first date or whatever meeting somebody new is so exciting and fun because like yeah you get to learn all these new things about somebody who's interesting you know 
there's a different level of excitement too about learning about that partner and really, you know, like you're hungry for Mm -hmm. knowing more about them. And the task at hand when we talk about love maps in long term committed relationships is continuing to date your partner, continuing that curiosity to fill yeah. in the map because it changes. And the, I mean, you know, and the map is like almost infinite. So you're never going to like illuminate the entire map. Yeah. And Esther Perel speaks to that about the difference. Like there has to be a balance in autonomy and in fully knowing your partner. Mm-hmm. Like you have to have, and there's something exciting about that otherness. Mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy that part of how I see Zach's otherness. And last night he had a show is when he does music and I go to his show. Those are qualities and skills that I don't have or a level of confidence. I don't have an ability to like show emotion in your voice that isn't something I can do. It's an otherness that's attractive. And and to be able to, you know, have an, enough autonomy to develop that apart from your partner, yeah. like that's his own thing. Yeah. I, I'm not really involved. I carry equipment in sometimes. <laughs> it's just like I have pockets of my identity that are my own thing. It's but, attractive when you see that person light up. Yeah. Yeah. But like, but you're all, all also like you want to be a part of that world though too. Because there's a there's a a slippery slope in relationships yes. where somebody will have like a hobby and that's their escape from the relationship and they yeah. don't they don't bring their their partner into it and um so yeah it's good that you can go to his show and be supportive and like be like his number one groupie right <laughs> but it but it is but it is a balance between autonomy and connection for yeah. sure i think that's exactly what you're saying mm-hmm. and and that's true so in john gottman's work he really emphasizes that ability to connect and what's necessary to do that so he's looking at are we understanding each other's perspectives are we able to have effective communication are we able to solve our problems if the answers are no, or it seems like there's tension in that direction, or even some couples feel like, I don't even want to spend time with this person. Yeah. Um, those are all indications that we need to work on improving the love maps, that foundation of this marital house, if we're picturing it. We spoke about this in a previous episode about John Gottman talks about the sound marital house, that foundation being of friendship and love maps. And if our foundation isn't strong there's Mm going to be structural issues and in trust commitment turning towards your partner so there's our our background and kind of a review of the very basics of this principle how do you start to cultivate those love maps what i find even in long-term committed couples and relationships that with people that I work with, with the clients I work with, there's a real fear of being vulnerable, even mm. with that person that you have a ring on your finger and an anniversary date. Yeah. Like yeah. to say that I would like to know you more. I want to get to know you. I want to, ha- I want you to see more of me. That means there has to be a bid to connect. Mm-hmm. And I think people are really terrified about the vulnerability, the vulnerability, there we go, of that bid. There's still a fear. Will my partner accept me or not? Yeah. And tends to cause people to hold back from really updating their love maps appropriately. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, I'm just going to shoot from the hip, think out loud. Be Like the next relationship that I'm in, <laughs> I'm going to be so stubborn about creating a culture of curiosity. Mm. Like that's going to be like the thing mm-hmm. because, um, you know, I I want to be not only just always learning this person forever, but I want them to reciprocate that, you know, mm-hmm. because if it's just one way, obviously, then it's, it's a very unhealthy relationship. Mm. But it's like, OK, will you agree with me to never stop learning about each other, you know? Mm. And so um, and if we can cultivate that, then I feel like that's going to be so fun and like exploring like again, you, like. For example, Zach's one of his passions is traveling. You said you want to travel. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, imagine traveling your partner. You know what I mean? Like, just uh, like yeah, illuminating the map and just learning new things. Because the the one the one thing that I think where a lot of relationships get tripped up is when they think that they have the person figured out, and they're yes. like, I don't really want you near me in this like moment right now because I just know what you what you bring and I know what you offer so 
when we think that we have someone figured out is the moment that we're the, our most wrong. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Cause you don't even yeah. like, like we said before, like we're even like we're on a, a, a self discovery because yeah, I don't know my whole story. I, 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 I'm still discovering things today. Like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. That makes sense. You know? And so for, um, for somebody to be like, Oh, I had, I got you pegged, you know, it's like no, you don't. It's a really unloving thing to yeah. do, isn't it? Like it's a self righteous. It's thing a to very do. Yeah, yeah. It's a very self righteous thing to do. It's a lot of like m- most couples who enter my office. It's a lot of like, well, they're the problem. Yeah. You know, I've got them figured out. I know them better than they know themselves. Yeah. And this is what I figured out. So mm-hmm. I'm here disgruntled. I don't really think I need to change. But if you could fix them, that'd be great. Yeah, and <laughs> usually it's um, their a lot of the times their complaint is. They don't like, they don't pay enough attention to me or something, right? And it's like. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I think, well, the underlying issue, even if that isn't their complaint, is still that you haven't solidified your love maps. Like if you're, if someone is saying like, oh, my partner, they're so clingy around me and I just don't want to spend time with them. I'm like, well, are you really getting to know them? Or are you being decisive about who they are and saying you don't want to spend yeah. time with them? I mean, and I feel like it just takes a little tiny bit more energy to just make that flip to be curious. You know, it's not mm-hmm. that hard. I mean, it's like if it, when you're um it's it, it's like leaning in you you just put a little bit of effort into exploration and curiosity that's what i love about you james but i think a lot of people find it incredibly difficult to be curious and vulnerable like there's a level of honesty then of saying i'm not right i don't have you pegged and therefore i feel out of control mm. in that feeling and yeah, i like don't want to risk being mm. honest and vulnerable yeah because i could get hurt that's true because well i mean a lot of people won't reciprocate that. And know? unfortunately, in a lot of marriages and even as people who we, we think and we see who seem happy that continually it's not reciprocated. And there's yeah. a lot of messaging behind the why. Oftentimes I speak with all, all not just couples, but couples, clients. They have this idea of like, well, I feel angry about it or I feel really hurt about it and I picture an iceberg because an iceberg we see about 10% above the surface and everything else underneath we don't see how large it is or what is keeping that buoyancy and so I would say yeah that's a really easy emotion to feel anger you're angry at your partner what's underneath that probably betrayal I'm feeling vulnerable I'm feeling unheard I feel misunderstood I feel as though you know I'm I'm very exhausted and frazzled about the conversations I'm overwhelmed like that's though that is vulnerability yeah that's what if you could say to your partner hey like I care about you but I'm also feeling these things and I'm going to have to cool down. That's really different than I'm so mad and you're wrong. Yeah. (laughs) Most people are unaware. And I think in couples, especially couples that have children or high levels of responsibility, it's easy to become the CEOs of your home. Mm. Who's picking up the kids? What do we have for dinner? Who's getting the groceries? And that is not the same thing as cultivating a love map. Mm. And so that is not a curiosity about your partner That's not a desire to learn more. And that can become a bit tricky and difficult in the busyness of life. So that does look like intention. Even though we're busy, we have a sitter lined up to give date nights. And when I come home and before we go to work, we're always going to say, what's going on in your day? I hope you have a good day. Or I'd love to hear more about what happened in your day. What were you grateful for today? There's these connected conversations and moments that we're being intentional about versus running right into the being the CEO. And that's something I can be guilty Mm, of. Like it feels like the priority in the moment. And Zach and I have to communicate about like what the right flow is for there to be space for both. Like there are some Um, logistical things in the home that are time sensitive. Can we talk about that first so I can relax enough and not have it on my mind to listen in a different way to a more love map type of conversation. So you have to be able to articulate what you're feeling and know what you're feeling for it to come across non-defensive. And that didn't happen overnight for us. It took a little bit of practice. It was a conversation that had to come up a few times before Um, even I could find the right words to say, okay, I'm a little overstimulated when it happens at this time of day, I'm going to work on it. Can you work on it? This is what would work better. 
any that's one example of how a couple could communicate through you know, time for the logistics and time for the love map conversations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because like it, what you're describing is so common, probably like 99 mm-hmm. percent of relationships. There's that like uh, just annoyance and mm-hmm. frustration, which is human nature. I mean, I, like I get annoyed with like my brother who I love, you know, mm-hmm. but um. But at the same time, I mean, how do you combat that? Because that is so ingrained in us to just be inwardly focused. Yeah. How would, how would you? I think we have to normalize it. We're not always going to get it perfect. So yeah. it's okay if we f- slip up, but do we identify it enough to say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry I said it that way. You know, can I have a, a do over? Or, mm. you know, I, I realize I wasn't curious enough right there. And so it's less so always getting it right and more so how many times are we noticing enough to attempt a repair? Mm-hmm. Like we have to, pr- like, if we notice it, try to repair it. And the other partner hopefully is aware and sees your humanity of like, it's okay if you don't always get it right, but you're making an effort to repair and I can, I can t- turn towards that. So that turning towards is important because otherwise I see a lot of couples kind of do this back and forth of like, oh, now you want to come and talk? I don't think so. Silent treatment. And yeah. so it's like, I'm going to retaliate with your bid to repair by not turning towards you and being colder and this is really unhealthy that's more common Mm -hmm. when you don't really have those connected conversations to navigate your partner's world yeah you're making that assumption that they were doing it out of like a a selfish reason or a whatever reason instead of like you know maybe my partner was just tired yeah maybe they're having a bad day okay i have a question i don't know if this is related (laughs) necessarily but it made me think of a question mm. that I was actually talking about yesterday with okay. somebody. What do you think of the advice that is right now considered good advice, but I disagree with it? What do you think of the advice, don't go to bed angry? Um, I don't think that's realistic that's not a realistic statement to say for all couples. Okay. And I should probably, I should probably qualify why I'm asking sure. that question. Oh yeah, you can, you can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, because like my take is that like, I'm sure you've heard this, uh, where like, a, let's say a couple, the woman says like, I was always taught that like, if you are in a fight, you got to mm-hmm. finish the fight. You got to sit there and finish the fight. Don't like, don't walk away, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, I'm like, well, if you understood yeah. like, the stress hormones that are flooding mm-hmm. your brain in that moment, you absolutely need to walk away for 20 minutes. Yeah. You know? This is why I didn't have like a yes or no answer because okay. I think it would depend on um, the couple in the situation. Mm-hmm. So yes, your insight is very correct. If someone is feeling flooded and they don't have the tools, flooded meaning I am so overwhelmed by my emotions, mm-hmm. my heart rate is 100 beats per minute or more and I'm no longer too able to communicate or listen effectively. Yeah. We're in that um, heightened uh, neurological state. Yeah, cortisol and uh, adrenaline are pumping. Mm. We physically aren't able to solve the problem. Yeah, then. So a pause is required. Yeah, The person needing the pause has to articulate it well and know to say, I need a break. I'm going to take some time to cool down. We can address this later. And the other person has to not like have enough security in the relationship to know and trust that that person is going to do that and use that time effectively. Which like, I feel like if you're committed to love maps, then there's going to be like this culture of grace almost right. Where, because I know that there are relationships where if that were articulated, if like, let's say, let's say I'm in that relationship and I'm Mm -hmm. like, Hey, I need like 20 minutes to cool down. This is great. We're going to do a role play. So let's do that. And, an example of how someone could react if there was a strong love map and if there wasn't. So in an argument, you're saying, you're asking for the time, go ahead. 
like, okay, I'm getting triggered here. I can feel it. I need to like step away for like 30 minutes. Sure. You're going to do it again. You're going to just walk away. You're not going to solve the problem. We're never going to solve yeah. this, are we? This is happens all the time. I can't believe this. It's yeah. just going to stew. Like, no, great, no. great way to solve the problem. You're just going to like turn over and not give a crap. Yeah, you're going to run away. You're yeah. going to be, a, you're going to be, you're not a man, you know, things like, like that. What, what, what good does that do? Yeah, exactly. Right? Continuing to feel flooded. Yeah. And then I'm just like, you know what? And then it just elevate, escalates. escalates, right? Okay. Now, if there was a healthy love map, rewind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm 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 feeling triggered. I'm I I just need like thirty minutes to cool down. I promise I'll come back and we can talk this out. Okay. I'm, that's hard for me because I really hate when we're disconnected. But I hear what you're saying, and I'm really gonna try. I'm gonna go do something else. If, if I like, I know it's hard if I set a timer for thirty minutes. Like, if thirty minutes okay to just check in. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying we have to solve it then. I'll just, I'm just going to check in. I want to know that, that we're okay still. Okay. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like if those, if those, if those two people existed in a, in a relationship, there probably wouldn't have been a fight in the first place, you know? Well, not maybe, necessarily. Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat uh, role playing conversations that Zach and I have had in the ways that they've felt or gone and yeah. how they've improved. That was when... so healthy. That response. Oh. <laughs> I would say, I don't know, Zach, when we get to those places, it's not like it's necessarily a direct route. It becomes more and more direct. But sometimes there's a loop-de-loo of miscommunication that's mm. not fun. Yeah. Like, what, yeah, that? Zach, what, what yeah, do you think? And <laughs> I, I actually noticed something, too, which I think that piece of advice that don't go to bed angry, I think that the uh, verbiage of it's wrong. Mm. I think maybe this the... Uh, underlying message is a good one though and what i think yeah. that is is like if i'm mad and without any address at all mm. i just go to bed yeah yes. because then it you're, just then you're flooded all night long well you're also putting your partner you're not giving any reassurance yeah. to your partner so that's a and thank you for bringing me back to the point of balance is that that's if great. there's a situation where now we'll roll reverse for the ease of this i'm the one who's upset and i'm just like pfft. F this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's tension all night long. In there's bed. no, it's silent treatment. Yeah, there's no, that's it's a great point. so now there's no turning towards yeah. one another and there has to, that takes vulnerability, but isn't that what a health, do you have to be able to accept influence? I have to be able to know that sometimes I'm wrong and my partner's going to be my mirror. That's what I want in my relationship. Yeah. I don't want to always be right. I want someone who will reflect and wants me to be the healthiest version of me. Yeah. Okay, so I guess when I asked that question, I, I, because I agree everything that Zach just said, hundred percent. Yeah, um, I guess I was really just trying to address the like stay and fight me. Yeah, no, idea. exactly, and that's why I think it's a really important mm -hmm. thing because it's a common uh, bit of advice. I don't think it's good advice though, mm -hmm. but I don't for different reasons. Yeah, like, but I, go to bed. Ang don't go to bed angry. That actually is good advice. <laughs> yeah, resolve it, but do it healthy. Like, make sure you cool down. And then you can successfully resolve it. And then you can go to bed. Yes. And, and and like if you can be upset with your partner and still give them reassurance that like, I still love you and care about you. I'm just working. I can be upset or mm -hmm. I can be frustrated. I can feel stuck. And at the same time, I can value you and love you as a person. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have to flip flop. Both are true at the same time. Yeah. And so letting them know that even when you're upset is a healthy and okay thing to do. Yeah. So what we're, I'm talking about a lot of these Gottman principles, partially because I'm so excited about this work. You can see how it provides such opportunity for people to understand themselves and their partner better. So um, myself and Zach, we're going to be hosting a really awesome intentional love workshop here in Richland, Washington, um, April 22nd and 23rd. So look into registering. We'll be going over the seven principles of making marriage work, which is applicable to all um, couples, not just married couples. So if you're in a long-term relationship or even premarital just a committed relationship where you'll learn how to enhance love maps, solve your problems, turn towards your partner, um, and just have like more meaning and purpose in your life with the person you want to live your life with. So it's a, it's, it's exciting.
check it out. The link will be posted with the video or um, wherever you are finding this clip. <laughs> Sweet. That sounds exciting. It is. So what are ways that someone can cultivate a better idea of their love map, expand that new experiences with their partner? And I think that's part of why travel for both Zach and I is part of that, like getting to experience a new culture or getting to just be somewhere new for the first time. Like, you're creating that love map right there. How do they respond in that place? How are they in this setting, in that setting? What is it like when we're learning about this together? Um, when you are going on a more interactive date, that's mm -hmm. another way. And I feel like a lot of people, it's like we spend time together and they tell me about sitting on the couch and watching TV. What are you learning about your partner when you're sitting on the couch watching TV? Sometimes, though. It's nice to just chill out. It is. And I love doing that. Mm -hmm. I totally do. But if that is like your best example yeah. or the only example you have, mm -hmm. we should give you some new ideas. <laughs> I had this. I was talking to uh, the gals at my front desk at my office the other day. And because I kind of came to this like epiphany about gift giving. And because that's gifts are probably my number two love language. And, um, so what I, cause, okay, let, let's say for Valentine's day, for example, mm -hmm. let's say, have you ever asked a question to Zach, what do you want for Valentine's day or what do you want for your birthday or vice versa? Mm -hmm. And then you, or you might say like, you're so, you're, you're hard to shop for, you know, like, I don't know what to get you. And I'm like, cause you're missing the point of mm. gifts because the whole, like when people say like, oh, I'm, I'm married. I'm dating a really rich man, so how do you buy gifts for somebody who has everything? But it's like because if you look at gifts like souvenirs, like if I go to Nashville, for example, and let's say mm. I'm dating someone, I'm just going to probably buy her a keychain. And like it's going to be an awesome gift because it's like, hey, I was far away from you. I was thinking about you, and I wanted to give you like some staple of where I was when it, I was thinking about you. Yeah, represents the thoughtfulness. Yeah. And the, and, yeah. And I know that we always hear it's the thought that counts. And that, like, you know, let, we have to unpack that. But, like, yeah, I, I feel like that's that's a more appropriate thing. So then to be, like, as far as, like, planning dates and how to spend time with your, with your partner. And, yeah, gift giving. Like, just it's all about creativity because the idea of just honoring that person and, like, you've spent, you're, you're not physically near them but you're but they're on your mind mm -hmm. like especially if you're dating someone and you know that they're the way that they want to receive love when it comes to love languages mm -hmm. is gift giving so then that is definitely like checking a box when it comes to like love maps because i'm knowing then in that example it's showing i know enough about my partners in the world to know that they would appreciate this mm -hmm. and that means I understand how to value them better. Yeah. If you were giving a gift to a partner and that wasn't their love language, because each partner you date is going to be different and have different mm. preferences, that might just look like, thanks for this trinket. <laughs> yeah. They might not be appreciative. Yeah. If their love language is quality time, they might be like, well, thanks for the trinket. But now because you were gone, I want a full week of your uh, time and attention. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if it's like a, uh, like a culture of, you know, love maps. And a culture of appreciation. Yeah. Yes. And that's what it does is cultivated from like when you really know your partner. Mm -hmm. And I, I can understand that point. Exactly. Like yeah. that's like that next late level, excuse me, the next level of this sound marital house is yeah. it's much easier to then be able to share that admiration for them in whatever way that looks like, because we want to have a positive perspective towards our partner, yeah. right? I want to like who I'm with. Nearness. Yeah. yeah. And best friendness. I, best friendness. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like we are on the same team. Mm -hmm. Um, and that requires paying attention to it. What, here's something that kind of stinks women tend to be more critical in the relationship. I know this, you know this, and it's an, it's unfortunately true. And part of it is because biologically there is a need for women to have safety in the home, yeah. right? And like keeping track of tasks. I'm not saying every woman needs to stay at home or have children, do whatever the fuck you want. I'm saying that our brains are wired a certain way to survive. And part of survival means taking care of your offspring and women have a uterus that create offspring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to deflect the haters. So 
biologically there's this need that means that we're always assessing risk and we're actually assessing risk more than men are because there's a, then our brains are meant to operate a different way to serve a different purpose mm. so if something isn't going right like a woman notices and mm. might be more likely to say it in a way that isn't so much a complaint but a criticism like well, you never do this. Aren't you going to do that? Etc. Versus, I'd really appreciate it if you took out the garbage, or yeah. it, it comes across differently. And for a lot of men, that pulls them into a place of wanting, like, stonewalling, withdrawing. Mm. It doesn't feel good to be around someone who's going to be critical of me. I'm going to dive into work. I'm going to dive into this hobby, and there's more and more distance that yeah. is created. So, there are some really common themes that can happen and that's where getting more of an understanding and in what to be aware of in your relationship and how to cultivate a culture of being honest and curious with your partner. Yeah. It it doesn't just magically happen. It yeah. needs to you have to you, you're going to be uncomfortable, but it's going to be okay. Well, I mean, as I'm imagining that type of culture in a relationship, it's almost like euphoric. You know, mm. like it's the closest thing to magic, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think it's rare to even for a lot of people to s what is an example of a healthy relationship? It's hard to pinpoint what that is. I feel like we're defining it though a little more. We're, we're yeah, illuminating that map. We're illuminating <laughs> that map. I think on average, like 10 years ago, if I was asked that question, I would have struggled to come up with an example. Would, yeah. I mean, yeah. 10 years ago, I would have said, well, I need to have a lot of money. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it, you know. Yeah, like, I, I, well, ten years ago we were all younger and dumber, so we didn't mm. really maybe have the context for why these foundational pieces are as important. Mm. I think a lot of young couples they view it that way. Like, I want need to have the house, got to provide for the family. We have goals for our family, and it's a different perspective when you realize that the goals have to be built on a foundation of connection. That yeah. means now I'm not rushing to work or spend time outside of the home i'm mm -hmm. being really intentional about how important it is yeah, for me to know like, my partner yeah it's nothing without that like yeah. then i'm gonna have a pile of money and be miserable with this mm -hmm. person that i haven't invested into yeah so this is a way for everyone to know themselves and their partner better and again like there is nothing more exciting than when you have someone that a you understand how to respect each other you share that appreciation for one another. You are aware of when they're trying to repair or make a bid and you don't twist it in a manipulative way or you catch yourself and you're accountable. Mm -hmm. It makes it so much easier to see this vision for the future where you can be aligned in what you're wanting without viewing it as um, unrealistic. Because some people really stick in a situation where the pretty picture isn't what's really happening, but they lie to themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get caught in, a, in an unrealistic story. Yeah. A fabrication. Yeah. And yeah, I, th I feel like everyone's, um, you know, misconception of what, yeah, the, the characteristics of a healthy relationship, that's we all strive for something unattainable and impossible. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I feel like a nice little checkpoint of what I would say based on the, our conversations, what I would now identify as a healthy relationship would be that culture of curiosity, nearness, best friendness. These are all words that we invented. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and like those, that's almost like framework right there. And uh, look at us, we're building, we're 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 making a, uh, look. we're creating a, a new trend. <laughs> I mean, I think there's are the soft skills and the step that some people think doesn't need to be addressed. And I guess I want to be a message for it being really the most important step, and it's not one that we want to miss. Not only in again a romantic relationship and a family, but even in your organizations, care about your people. Let them know that they. Um, deserve to be seen. Let them know that there is a, a culture of fun and appreciation. And, and when there's intention there, I think things just run smoother. Yeah. So with that being said, I kind of want to, do we have time to do one more 
question for the four of us? Yes, let's do it. Okay, this is one that Wait, I ask do a lot I'm of. On, do we? Oh, I know. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's not even the. You're not even the one taking Sorry, the time. I'm just so excited you're for the question. At, you're at forty minutes, and it's twelve fifty six. Oh, sweet. Okay, so we 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 need like well, fifteen more minutes. We have an adv- advice thing too. Okay, well let's just do this question. Okay, I, I all right, really it'll be idea. fast. This is yeah. what I ask a lot of, of the kiddos that I work with. I think it's fun. If you had any superpower, what would it be? And oh my gosh, why? I already I've, I've rehearsed well? this answer. Oh, okay. so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish no, your question. I'm, 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 James. Is that the question? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, that's my question. What, what superpower would I be? Yeah. Or what I have is teleportation. <gasps> As, that's usually one of my go-tos. I have two in my top. But so tell me why. What would you do with this? Okay, so I've again spent a lot of time thinking about mm-hmm. this. Um, because most people like they say they want to fly, or you know, but you don't need to fly if you can teleport. It's short sighted. The yeah. flying, yeah. And so, um, and then just, I mean, I would, I would, wouldn't have, I would just travel. I would, I would teleport into a. You Did know, you say you wanted to say Rob Banks? Ex- that's exactly what I was about, about to say. I saw your lips moving. No, well, I was, I was going to say <laughs> that. Yeah, I would teleport into a bank vault, steal a bunch of money, and I would be rich. And then, like, you know, if are we describing the plotline to Jumper? Yes, but Jumper sucks. <laughs> when Jumper came out, I was like, oh, this is my my lifelong fantasy. And then they're like, let's let's cast like the worst actor ever. And let's just make and the whole uh, it's a stupid movie. I hate that movie. <laughs> that they, is such a strong. Those, those are some big feelings. Yeah, I know. Big feelings well, about are, Jumper. I'm, they're yeah. unpacking that <laughs> that movie had the such a great concept they could have done better with it but they ruined it wow so james we need to the jump critic. at 2.0 okay it's starring james Timmons. yeah i would love to <laughs> i'd love the opportunity <laughs> oh my gosh anyway, that's, okay that's okay superpower. okay zach or kyle whoever is uh picks the short straw what superpower would you have and why okay um this is kyle um i think something i'd go for is the power of invisibility like something that always comes to mind for me specifically is like um from harry potter when he like puts on the invisibility cloak and like goes to the restricted section of the library just mostly purely for exploration of like areas that i would stand out and just being able to go and do oh. other things see other <laughs> places that it's i don't know i either yeah. wouldn't be allowed to or just you know stuff like that but is this is kind of like a projective assessment for me where I'm like, what does that say about Kyle's personality? <laughs> you know, it's funny is that our, our viewing audience, Kyle does have the invisibility cloak. They can hear he his does. voice. Oh hero. my gosh. This is your invisibility cloak, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <gasps> he's more, he's the more, well, I'm getting to know you still, Kyle, but I say we're the th- other three of us are kind of louder than Kyle. Too. Yeah. And so, I'm, I'm pretty introverted. And yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's fitting. It's like, I want to, I want to absorb the knowledge or know the things, but I kind of want to do it in like the safety and secrecy of my own little bubble. But that, but I love it that it like showed through in your example. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Zach, what do you think? I don't know if I've asked you this question actually, honey. Yeah, I don't know if we ever if we have ever talked about this. Uh, this is interesting. Yeah, for me, probably uh, like if, if I could have one, I guess it would be the ability to uh, either like make time stand still or slow down time mm. or or something of that like nature. Like Quicksilver, because I think there's just like there's so much that I want to do, you know, oh, yeah. and like having that ability to to. What if have you want the time. ability to not have? You don't need sleep. You're always well rested. So then you could always be learning and doing <laughs> things like a vampire. That's such a nerdy, like an, a that would be such a nerdy answer, though. <laughs> uh, but you're starting to understand how nerdy we are. Like it feels on yeah. brand, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> is, she, is that well? No, but let's. Okay, Zach, you said time time to stand so like you could you can. Like Quicksilver, like he's so super fast, but like from his perspective, time stands still. Is that what you're talking about? I don't know because I'm not familiar with Quicksilver. Oh, like, uh, yeah. Well, you gotta watch X Men. Uh, I suppose more just the the ability to like literally pause time. I like Zach know. Morris. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Okay, pause awesome. time. Um, I thought you were maybe going to steal mine, but I'm glad you didn't, Zach. Okay, mine what is yours? would be, well, sometimes it's teleporting. It depends on my mood. Today, in this moment, I would want the ability to speak and understand every language. Ooh, that's a good one, too. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you're more cerebral. You're like Professor X. 
Well, I don't know. I mean, because then when I'm traveling, think of how much easier it is if you can speak and understand every language. Yeah. And then I think there's so many different interpretations of a word or sometimes there's words that we don't have in English that feel more accurate in a different language. It'd be cool to just like know it all. If you could pause time, though, you could just learn every language. But, Ooh, but you mine, have to do like effort. yeah, that's effort. I'm <laughs> saying I don't have to do like, what's the point of having a superpower if I have to work? I'm <laughs> saying like, funny. bam. Yeah, that, OK, that would be a cool. One. In sign language, too. Like I could interpret be I, like, I like the people who are really into it. I'd be like, yeah, I like dancing. But could you speak to animals? Yes. Yes, that too. OK, I'm just going to go ahead and, and make this statement. But my superpower is way cooler than all your guys' superpower. You know, I'm sorry no. to say that. No, you know what? I'd like for the listeners, I'd like for our dear, delightful listeners to comment. Comment down below and say, <laughs> which superpower of our four would you want? We have ability to learn and speak, understand, or to understand and speak all languages, mm -hmm. teleportation, the invisibility. Invis visibility cloak, and then we have, what was Zach's again? <laughs> just a uh, uh, pause time. Pause time. Yeah, only the most powerful one because I could go anywhere. I could get into bank vault if I could pause time because everyone true. else is frozen, you know? But then you got to like still sit through painful Who things. Who's learning their, it's good who's for you, using James. their power good for, for good? Huh? You know what? Me. Kyle and Kehlani, the K squareds. <laughs> okay. It doesn't, it, good is overrated. I'm perfectly happy being selfish and stealing all the money and going all the places. <sighs> okay. Here, there's one superpower that me and my son came up with, and we even came up with a character. I'm just going to go on a little rabbit trail here. Yeah. His name is Captain Poopy Pants, and he has the uh, superpower of pooping other people's pants. <laughs> Poopy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you should pick. <laughs> <laughs> that's my second. That's my number two. That's your no, no pun intended, number two. Oh. <laughs> So we were going to make, me and my son were going to make a, a video about Captain Poopy Pants coming to save the day because he poops the pants of his enemies and they're just like, oh, I need to go to, the, you know. Anyway. Yeah, that's funny. That's a good one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if that's, if that's the wild card, if you Solo, guys. Solo, don't vote for his, vote for mine. <laughs> okay. Anyway, why do you, why do you ask this question? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, I learned way more about the four of you when, <laughs> or the three of you when I asked that question. So it was super fun. I feel like it definitely related to each of your personalities a lot more. And that's why I like asking that question yeah. to kids too. But again, the love maps of delightfully dysfunctional have just expanded. <laughs> We've illuminated the map. We've illuminated them. Like a video oh. game. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So I do, there was a. There was another person who wrote in for some advice and I actually called them. So I spoke with them to follow up and get some more information. It's helpful for me to give the most accurate advice. So we have, we're ready for one more. Are you ready to give your best advice, James? Yes, always. <laughs> okay. So this person has been in a long-term relationship. We'll call them Amy. Okay. Amy's been in a long-term relationship for quite some time. There's a couple kids involved. We're talking like, I think hmm, probably over a decade or so. Okay. And the relationship with our partner really ebbs and flows in moments of connection and moments of kind of disgust. Mm. And after speaking with Amy, I realized it had so much to do with this exact issue we're talking about, like the time available, especially with two kids that are in like sports and things like, are your kids in sports and all the extracurricular stuff yet? Uh, kind of. Yeah. Some of them, yeah. I mean, I just feel like some of these families with like multiple kids and everybody's in something. I don't. The time really doesn't add up to me. Like time really does need to be added into the week in order to have a healthy relationship if yeah. you're or you have to be very intentional. So basically all the time in the week is sucked up with things in life happening without there being any protection of what's needed to know one another. So what Amy's noticing is there's a lot more conflict. There's mm -hmm. a lot more not feeling engaged or connected with their partner and like their sex life is in the tank. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what we learned about love maps, what options I want, I want, you're going to be the therapist. You're going to oh, therapize no. oh, Amy. No. You're going to start <laughs> off. What would you tell Amy are some things she and her partner could work on? Oh man. That's a quite the curveball for me. Uh, well, I mean, my question, I guess, would be like, what's the husband's schedule? 
or the I, I'm assuming husband. It, yeah, it is a husband. Okay. It, quite busy um i i feel like from what i learned maybe is balancing not being a workaholic okay. and can kind of lean into that and sometimes. also like where do the kids stand do they want to be involved in all these extracurricular activities because i know that like mm. i have a friend whose son is in baseball and they are so the the baseball program is like so cutthroat you have to like in the summertime like it's such a commitment yeah it's like yeah. hours and hours and i'm like they, they took all the fun out of it like i don't yeah. remember baseball being that much of a commitment but like and so it's like okay that's super unfair for the kids but then at the same time like all these programs now want to be like elite and best in the world and so <laughs> i mean m this is not good advice but my own personal opinion is like just don't put your kids in sports <laughs> you know <laughs> i to think over booking our our children and and creating a dynamic where it's impossible to nurture the mm. marriage in the family if yeah. that's how, what your family looks like it doesn't have to i think that that's doing a real disservice to the whole family and right now there's a lot of very overbooked families yeah exactly and i just it's such a hard situation because mm. and um i mean because a lot of the time yeah the kids do love it most of the time but then <laughs> I just, I feel like, where's There's it all coming from? There's not enough options for kids that are like the normal amount of yeah. time commitment that it seems more appropriate. Well, it's all, it's, it's, it's like all, everyone involved in my, just, this is my mm -hmm. speculation outside perspective. Everyone involved is operating out of fear. So mm -hmm. like dad and husband fear he needs to work super hard because he fears that he's not going to be able to provide and he's, mm -hmm. they're not going to have a quality of life. Mom fear that her kids are not going to amount to anything so then mm. she has to like you know plug them into everything so that they can like get the most out of life kids operating out of fear because like they're afraid they're going to disappoint they've already come this far they're this invested mm. into like whatever sport and so and it's like what are you so afraid of what like have you guys sat and then just maybe considered like just letting it all go and going like what do we really want hmm. like how do we really want to live let's go f baseball and let's go to disney world i mean that's not any cheaper but you know it just sounds like high school musical like <laughs> the guy who, who's in basketball he's like i don't want to be in basketball anymore i've never watched high school musical but i know i'm learning something new now <laughs> but yeah yeah um I think that there are definitely cases where the parents' idea of what the child should be in or the idea of like keeping them busy keeps them out of trouble yeah. or I want them to be in this sport because it was a sport I was in yeah. and we can connect on that or being really unaware of like where your kid's desires really are. Those are all pieces that might be happening in this particular example but are definitely happening in society. Yeah. Um, and... You really described like a, a psych, you described what I think is common in this idea of families that are trying to aim for perfectionism mm -hmm. and uh, missing the mark on what's really important. Yeah. Well, and like for me, I lived in that culture for m almost all my life mm. was perfectionism and like based out of fear. But now that I tore it all down. Like I, I have like an allergic reaction to some, to people who operate from a place of fear, you know? And so, yeah. and so I could smell it, but like, um, but I mean, the thing is, I feel like everyone needs to take inventory of your life and just go, am I operating out of fear? Am I truly living the way that I, that makes me feel most alive? And that's not to say, if you conclude that, then you should abandon your life or anything like that. But it's like, well, just maybe like shake some things up, you know, just like get honest with yourself. Do you, like mm. people will always make the argument of like, well, kids need sports. They teach them like really good fundamental life skills. Yeah, absolutely. But you could teach them life skills too, you know, yeah. in way less time. <laughs> yeah, there's multiple avenues and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that the one that just because the one that is most used to enroll your kid in all these activities that doesn't because it's popular doesn't mean that it's healthier doesn't mean that it's right. Yeah. And I think that we're missing some of the downtime of just family time like time together with your family like yeah. after these events I feel like 
everyone comes home and they're so burnt out that it's like shoveling food in your face and like barely rolling into bed and the kids still have homework that never gets done and then like everyone's tired and kind of like dissolving to their devices it's yeah. not like that quality time together, which is also needed. And in a family, we should still prioritize first and foremost that relationship that partners have together because in dysfunctional homes, if that communication isn't there and there's tension in the home, that negatively affects the children. They pick up on that. I grew up in very tense homes. It was thick. You could cut it with a knife. I wish that there would have been more awareness on actually adopting the principles that are effective to, to solve things or improve things. The other thing that came up when you were sharing is I got really obsessed with the word effective at some point. <laughs> effective means using the right tools to solve the problem appropriately mm. or come up with your own variation of that. But like I to be effective means that I'm using an appropriate means to meet my goal. If someone wants to have a happy, healthy marriage and they're actually ignoring the pieces that need to be uh, robust for that to work you're not being effective. You're yeah. following a different formula that doesn't lead you to a happy, healthy relationship or a happy, healthy family. Yeah. Maybe you need to reevaluate, like you've been saying, yeah. the factors that are necessary to get what you want so that you are actually behaving effectively yeah. and not just lying to yourself and crossing your fingers or assuming that it should all work out because you got the house, you got the partner, you've got these kids enrolled in everything so they can be perfect little imitations of you. Check, check, check. Mm. Are you happy? Does any of that lead up to being happy? Yeah. Yeah. Or healthy? And honestly, I feel like if, if everyone takes the time to like truly be like brutally vulnerable and stubbornly curious and mm-hmm. like just really honest with yourself, you're going to find like that, that give, that's where life grows, Yeah, you know, cause people are so afraid to go there. What I think it is too, it's a real difficulty with regulating our emotions so that we can even look at that question. Yeah. But see, like, like I think it's fun. I do too. I've yeah. reached that point, but I think it's <laughs> taken practice and getting comfortable with discomfort. Now discomfort is my friend. Yeah. Now discomfort is exciting and a challenge. It doesn't feel like that for people in the beginning. It yeah. scares the shit out of them. That's yeah. why people don't want to be vulnerable. It's scary. Oh gosh. I would see my fantasy world is if everyone was vulnerable, like brutally vulnerable i keep using that adjective but and well and in other cultures it can be more so that like i feel like on the east coast there's more brutal vulnerability in some ways or even in like france they're kind of known for being brutally vulnerable to the point that like kind of people pleasing american culture goes over there and they're like ah the french are assholes no the (laughs) french are french or they're direct yeah they they don't hide yeah yeah and i grew up in northern minnesota which is kind of like i would say like the that peak of people pleasing. It's very, I mean, they're such nice people, Yeah. but it's like, Oh, don't you know, come on in, have some coffee. Yeah. Would you like Say me to feed you? Oh, no. Yeah. And now you're going to be <laughs> here for like an eon because there's so much just like niceness on top of niceness. Is it um, weird that that accent makes me crave pumpkin or I mean, chicken pot pie. Chicken, it, um, well, it's a nice hot dish, you know. You don't have casseroles in sorry, northern Minnesota. Understand. Hot not, dish. Oh, the oh. hot dish, you know, that's a, that's a pot pie. It's like a Midwest hot dish. Oh, Zach, did she do this at home? It's hot. <laughs> Thank God, no. That's how we spice <laughs> things up in the bedroom, yeah. folks. <laughs> Terrible. That is, that is it is not, not a sexy accent. It's not a sexy <laughs> accent. No, it's not. Se- I know this. What is a sexy accent? I'm trying to think. I kind of, I, I just like, I just like the way that I talk. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you're getting yourself in the mood. Yeah, I'm just, I hear Are you just to listening to the podcast <laughs> and listening to yourself rant? Because I'm going to tell um, you. Let's refer back to narcissism. We just did that episode. I've got my notes here. <laughs> I've watched every episode dozens of times already. <laughs> well, you have to edit it. So you're forced to. Yeah. I can only listen to my voice for so long before <laughs> my ears start bleeding. <laughs> oh. That's a serious condition. That's a problem. Yeah. I should get that looked yeah. at. Speaking of smashing, smash that subscribe button. Like and follow us everywhere. Thank you, Delightful Humans, for following us. Make sure to follow our podcast and our YouTube. We're excited to keep being curious with you.